With me again is Michel Camilleri, and as promised, we're going to look under the hood of a Ferrari. And in this case, we've got the Testarossa. Ferrari Testarossa. And car, what are we looking at? The car is powered by a 5-liter flat 12, um, twin overhead cam, 4-valve per cylinder, so the car has 48 valves. Puts out about 390 horsepower, uh, top speed in the vicinity of 180 miles an hour. And I bet you don't drive these in the winter. No, you don't. Most people put them away for the winter time. I'll bet you I know another place you never drive, a Ferrari, and that is in the water, which leads us nicely into our next story with Sandra Neal. And you guessed it, she has a story on a car that goes not only on land, but in the water. If you own a convertible, you're probably the envy of most drivers in the summertime. This convertible belongs to Toronto entrepreneur Ken McGowan. And not only does it take him to the beach, but it puts him in the water. Woo! <laughs> the stares that Ken gets when he puts his West German Amphi car in water are too numerous to count. This four-seater Triumph engine Wunder car has got to be one of the most unusual vehicles on four wheels. It's got a hull. It's a completely sealed hull, and uh, so uh, the same as a uh, the same as a boat. It's registered as a car and a boat. So if you see the numbers on the side, those are the numbers uh, that that all boats must bear. So when you're in the water, you're a boat. That's right. And now, of course, you have to comply with all the boating regulations, and you have to be equipped to be a boat. Part of that equipment is uh, life jackets, one for every uh, person in the boat, which we have. Paddles, I have paddles under the front seat. I have everything that you're required to have in a boat. How fast can it go? I guess I should say, how fast can it go in water and on land? Well, uh, I think uh, about 10 knots on the water and on land, um, oh, 50, 55 miles an hour. The manufacturer that produced these amphibious vehicles was actually named Amphicar. Established in the 1950s, 50,000 vehicles were built and sold in a 10-year period. But the company fell into bankruptcy, mainly because Amphicars were selling for less than they cost to produce. In those days, the price tag was $3,500. It's bigger than, um, than, say, a Volkswagen. So it, it's like a compact, the size of a compact car, I'd say. And uh, very economical uh, on gasoline and uh, a well-built car, really. A, a chap uh, drew alongside of me, a young fellow, and said, do you want to race? Come on, I'll give you a race. And I said, uh, why, sure, I'll race you. Uh, I'll race you from here to Center Island. He didn't participate. When you bring it into the water, you put it in uh, low gear, that is the gear that moves the wheels, and you also put the gear on that turns the props, the two propellers at the back. And you bring it into the water with both the wheels turning and the propellers, and uh, you drive in until the propellers take over when you're, it, it floats, it uh, just floats off. You must get so many stares with this it, car. The, uh, whether you're on the water or on the land, always. You know, there's there, people along the shore stop and take pictures of you and uh, run and get their camera. Children particularly are fascinated with it. Why don't you think we see more amphi cars in the water? Well, uh, there's, there's not very many of them left uh, because after all, you know, they stopped making them over 20 years ago and that's quite a, uh, quite a time for a car to last. But the few that are left are in the hands of collectors and uh, I guess they hang on to them. You're not going to sell yours, are you? Not a chance. Not a chance. They haven't printed that much money yet. <laughs> 